Ethiopia, perhaps more than any other country, has come to symbolize the vulnerability of humankind to environmental catastrophe. This is a country whose problems have been increased by war and civil conflict. And now, human-induced climate change is predicted to make matters worse. As on the Lus Plateau, centuries of subsistence farming practices have stripped the land of natural vegetation. The dry gullies bear the scars of flash floods. These gullies are evidence of the enormous power of runoff during the rainy season. Without vegetation cover on the hillsides, when the rains come, the water doesn't soak into the ground but flows away in a flood. Then it's not available for agriculture during the rest of the year. This leads to drought, and famously for Ethiopia, famine. But just as I've witnessed in China, there is hope that the situation here can be reversed. Yeah, that route could survive? No? no. no in just six survive. years, Professor Lagessa Nagash and local villagers have transformed a severely eroded terrain by planting indigenous trees and plants. Almost miraculously, a clear flowing stream has emerged where once there was a muddy trickle. How is it that it's possible for you to get the stream to flow throughout the year? It is because of the vegetation cover, which has been regenerating on this mountain. This water is maintained in the landscape because as soon as rain falls on the canopy on this vegetation, that rain then infiltrated gradually into the ground, ending up with this steady flow of this river. Water is life. Without water, nobody can do anything. I'm amazed, as short as five years, six years, you get clean water like this, provided you work hard for restoring this degraded landscape. About a thousand kilometers further north, in the village of Abraha Aspaha, another near miraculous phenomenon is occurring. Farmers are finding water at the bottom of their wells, despite the poor rains this year. The famine of 1984 struck the people of this valley very hard. Many migrated, many died. Now the people are returning. The village chairman, Gabor Gede, remembers well how life used to be. Ten years ago, I'd say, even five years ago, I'll tell you what the situation was. It was absolutely terrible. The sun, the drought, the wind, it was all dry like the desert. There was a refugee program for our village, so we had a choice, leave the valley or do something. With government support, they applied the same principles as the Chinese, setting land aside for natural vegetation to return. In the ravines, they built small dams, which are now fed by underground springs. And like Professor Legessa's stream, rain that fell weeks ago now slowly seeps through the subsoil, replenishing the supply of water. The eroded land has become fertile. It's changed for the better. In the drought, our fruit trees dried up. Now they're coming back, and we're growing even more varieties. These are the real benefits we've seen. We have food security, and our children can go to school. Our lives have improved. We no longer need to beg the government for aid, thanks to the changes that we've made. Even wild animals which disappeared are returning, even the leopards. These villagers are now better able to withstand the impact of climate change. With international assistance, their achievement could be repeated across the country.
The benefits, as Professor Legessa points out, would spread far beyond Ethiopia's borders. The most important issue for Africa, and I consider this uh, Africa's 21st burning issue, is restoration. No matter what we do, we might be good at rocket, uh, rocket, uh, uh, rocket science, I mean, if we are, nuclear science, but the environment, restoring this huge, vast landscape, you know, degraded landscape, is critical for Africa, particularly for Ethiopia. You know, half of Ethiopia is mountain, and this mountain system is degraded. And this degradation of this huge landscape, huge mountain chain of Ethiopia, is critical not only for Ethiopia, but also for the entire region. Consider Egypt. Look at the Sudan, where 86% of the Nile flows to these countries. How can you support life in Egypt without restoring Ethiopia's mountains? So this is regional, national, and international.